welcome. This is the Integrated Math 2 practice test, the 10 ready practice test or TCAP practice test, whatever you'd like to call it. Question number eight. We're in subpart one, so no calculator here. You won't need it for this anyway. Um, number eight is actually one that has multi is considered to be a multiple select problem. It says select all values that, and you'll notice some of the answer choices have more than one value. It means that unlike traditional multiple choice where you only have one answer, in this case, all of them could be the answer, or none. So we're going to just pick the ones that meet the criteria. So it says, let C represent any non-zero rational number. Now, a rational number is a number, if I get my pen to work, that you can create a fraction with. From a decimal perspective, it's a number that either repeats, and a good example of that is something like one-third. Because we are in a base 10 system with our um, decimals, like each, it's a tenth and then a hundredth, or it's 10 and then a hundred, then a thousand, uh, the system doesn't really address one third very well because even though it's its own fraction and does, you know, terminate, we don't, or it does not, it doesn't terminate, uh, even though it does act as its own f fraction and is rational, we don't really have a way to show that, so we have to do repeat, repeating numbers because it just it's three, 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 three. So we say this. So that's an example of where it repeat. It's still rational. It's just the way that we analyze decimals doesn't match what it's trying to do. It's incongruous. The other thing would be that it terminates. Terminates means that it comes to an end. That's what identifies an irra a rational number. On the other hand, an irrational number is a number that can can't be a fraction or can't be a fraction or no terminate or does not terminate so what you get is that dot 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 thing so when it's like 4.5 3 6 dot 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 that's an irrational number also pretty much anything that doesn't resolve itself so say I have uh, under a radical symbol I should say so 5 and this is whatever if you can't uh, simplify it down into a rational term it's generally considered to be irrational now what does that have to do with anything well if I'm adding to A rational, I can make statements about this, and I guess I should read this to explain why. Let's see, represent any non zero rational number. Select all values that, when added to C, will produce an irrational number. So, irrational numbers just go on and on forever. You probably have friends that are like that. If you have a rational number here, and I add a rational number to it, two rational people together will produce a rational outcome. Now, if you have a rational person and you add an irrational person, just being in the same vicinity, the whole situation is still probably irrational. Like someone just can't get over the fact that uh, this movie that you've never seen or don't care about is so bad, and they just keep going on and on about it, and you're like, I just don't want to be here. Other people in your seating area probably don't want to be there, if you're at a restaurant, for instance, probably don't want to be there either. So that's an irrational situation. So anytime you add an irrational to a rational number, it's irrational. And if I was doing irrational together, two irrational things generally don't equal a rational situation either. So this is the outcome I'm looking for. Going back to the question, the non-zero part of the rational number delves more into what happens when you multiply them together. But this question doesn't cover that, so we're really not going to go that far into it. But if I was doing the uh, product, of rational and so I start with a rational here, I'm going to start with a rational here. If I multiply times a rational number, I'll likely get a rational outcome, because there's no reason for it to go irrational when the situation is simply multiplying. 
the, in terms of uh, everything else, if I have a rational and an irrational, it's, you would think like, well, multiplying by an irrational always makes it work, but it's actually sometimes, and I would say almost always, irrational. The exception is when you're multiplying by zero. Because then it, the zero is so powerful in this argument that it overpowers the irrational number altogether and makes it zero. So anytime you multiply by zero, it makes it zero, which is a rational situation. But in this case, in generally, rational times irrational will give you irrational almost always. Because you know once you get an irrational component into things, it kind of changes the scheme of things. So what are we going to do with all this now that we have this information? We're just going to analyze each of the results to see if they meet our criteria. And we're adding to a rational number. It's non-zero, which is why that non-zero is there. Um, if the number is rational we add it in, we get a rational number that does not meet our criteria. But if we have our rational and had an irrational number, then we get the one we want. So let's look at A, negative 5 over 13. Well, it makes a fraction, so this is rational. I'm just going to mark these up quickly. Pi squared, well, pi is an irrational number. That's why there's a symbol for it, or a you know, Greek letter. The uh, There's actually contests where you can go in, and if people memorize numbers in pi for long, long strings. So it really never terminates. If you square it, it's just, you know, it doesn't get any better. It's still irrational. The square root of 36 simplifies, which is kind of supposed to be tricky. Down here I said a square root most likely will be irrational, but only if it doesn't simplify. This one simplifies simply into 6, and that's totally a rational number. I mean, it's the most basic whole number type that you can get. This terminates, so it's rational. You'll notice there's no dot, dot, dot after it. It's just 0.73, so 8 and 73 hundredths. And the square root of 95. Now, the square root of 95, you can think about, does it simplify down? Um, no, it doesn't really simplify down in any way that's meaningful, anyway. So, irrational number. So I'm going to look for situations that I add an irrational to my rational to get irrational, here and here. And that's my answer. So the big takeaway from this is whether you understand what irrational and irrational numbers are. If you don't, go back and look. Know what the relationships are between adding and multiplying different types of numbers together or the same types of numbers together. And then also, when you have a multiple select problem, make sure that you um, really analyze each result and don't just look for one that gives you the answer and then move on. Because it's a really uh, not a super heavy thought process, but it'd be ridiculous. Uh, or not ridiculous, it would be a little sad to miss this problem just because you found the first one and then just gave up on the problem altogether.